I just had this conversation. Of, you, you asked a very similar question to a conversation I had with this guy, Mark Smith. Maybe you know him, JBS Training mm-hmm. Group, uh, the other day. And he was talking about this very thing in the ego and where the ego fits into this. And the belief system that you have that you can do it is, is where it starts, right? You have to yeah. have that. And then there's a self-talk or there's a conversation you're having in your head about, okay, I can do this, but how do I get there? And if I wasn't able to do the thing today, does that mean I suck, right? No, it just means I need to do something different in order to, order to get there. So we talked a little bit about like having knowledge, right? There's a, or an education behind what it is that you're doing or what you're trying to do, not just seeing somebody else do it and go, oh, I'm going to do what that guy did. And you were talking about that today, Matt, you had a couple of questions from the audience just about, you know, your, your, uh, your practice, like, and how you practice. And I I think the, again, the awareness with regard to the, what it is, the thing that you're trying to train and then bringing the ego to that, like, well, if I'm going to do this, I need to make a full commitment to it and I can do it. But then also there's a mindset piece that comes into that with, like I have to, I have to be talking to myself positively about doing this, not thinking about the things that I can't do, thinking about the things that I can and I want to do more specifically, and then putting a putting a, a plan together behind that. And I think uh, I think that's a big missing piece today with people that want instant gratification. Mm-hmm. And if they don't have that ego in check, that's always going to get in the way, and they're always going to have that internal conversation. And when it's not going their way, and when they did suck that day, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is that we're training. It manifests into this other thing, which is maybe dipping back into a comfort zone because that makes sure you go feel better. So you go back to the thing that you're good at. So like human performance space is a perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's constant. Anybody listening to the show that's ever done any kind of working out or whatever, everybody has drifted to the things that they're good at. And why are they mm-hmm. doing that? Because maybe they don't have the knowledge uh, of how to maybe fix it. But I think more of it is, is like, I don't want to suck. Like, and... and and I'm not sure I can be better. And it's just easier for me to do this other thing and be okay at this or good at this one thing and be satisfied with that. And I think to, to Matt's point, I think it's just not being satisfied. Like that is a, once I achieve that thing, like moving to the, to the next level. And that's the point I would add to this and, and turn it into a question is one of the things that I recognize from a lot of guys that are here that I'd never met before uh, that are instructing in trying to pick up kind of that ego piece and that ego check. I'm, I've said this before a lot of times. Is like I like to study the characters of, of who it is, like who's delivering the information and how they're delivering it. And then also, then after that, like, or sorry, once I've kind of assessed that from however I'm doing that, the social media, whatever's being provided for me, whatever I can consume, then it's, 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 it's listening and watching how that information is being delivered consistently. Not at the things that they're necessarily good at, but the things that they're talking about, Right. I think inherently they are good at those things, but it's not filled with a bunch of ego. It's not listen to me because, and I'm the best at this and I never suck. They all have talked about, like whether it's been in in one-on-one conversations or whatever, about their journey, about how they got there and all the messing up they did and all the mistakes they made. And that's the part that you you don't hear about. And I think if you you don't have a really good um, sense of your own ego, that gets lost a long time ago, and you, you'll you never be one of those guys at the Combative Summit instructing mm-hmm. anything ever. So again, like studying those guys and, and watching them and, and listening to them, there is a sense of humbleness and quiet confidence. There's also su- supported by a very healthy ego, knowing what they can do and what they're very capable of and really managing all of those things and keeping them in check. It's been impressive actually to watch and listen. And then I think the the what you whatever you call them participants disciples you know they're here trying to absorb it all they're representing that too which is different than a lot of training seminars or a lot of conferences or whatever that I ever go to it makes this thing pretty unique so again the question John is is like um, for you in terms of bringing all these things these guys together the ego piece the knowledge piece and uh, I guess all the things that, that that come along with it. I don't know if you were able to take anything away from, from today um, outside of just trying to make this thing happen, but what, what was the major takeaway from today outside of everybody had fun and a good time and seemed to get a lot out of it? The major takeaway, especially because there was so much more variety than mm-hmm. there was last year um, in terms of like that we got dry fire component, we've got a knife component and, you know, we, oh, brought, we brought two grandmaster shooters here and um, I love the overlap in terms of how people describe things. So the way 
Matt was describing how he approaches training in a very intellectual way where he is actually thinking about what it is that he's doing. He's paying attention to what is going on with his body. That's very similar to like me as a jujitsu guy, as far as like, I want to go ahead and watch the tape of myself rolling and see where that mistake happened. Mm -hmm. So that way I can correct it. Uh, and so it, it's, it's exactly the same thing that he was doing with his grip is like, well, that wasn't right. Let me readjust, assess, fix it, fit, make it do right. And then kind of re reattack that problem. And it, it, you're just kind of seeing that consistent theme through everybody, right? Like the, you guys are like, Hey, let's, I want to get data from everybody so we can kind of get a profile as far as like what the general student is like. Um, you know, some of the students that attend, I could very well be their student tomorrow. Right. Um, so everybody was their approach. Even, even Jeff's approach to building holsters is like right. thinking of like, he's, he's not just meeting a market demand. He's thinking about, he's, he's truly analyzing the problem of concealment and an application of the holster and then going back and designing it. And maybe people don't understand what, what's the going process. on there, right? right. And so I guess that the, if I had to sum it up to two words, it would say that everybody is process-driven and the, the outcome or whatever it is that they put out is really a byproduct of that. And, and I think even if you ask these guys to come up with, hey, let's teach a dry fire clinic next year or let's let's see what tenant quarter looks like in two years. It's like you probably might see something different because there's going to be this... Evolution? Well, not just the evolution, but there's there's repetition. Oh, and, the, and through the repetition of, in that process is that there's this refinement that's going on. And so that's that's my overall takeaway from watching all the guys work. And, and I think that's why everybody's able to get along so well because everybody's like, they're, they're looking for mastery Maybe whatever their craft is different, but that's really what they're all looking at. They're looking, they're, 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 mas they're seeking mastery and they're engaged in this process of repetition and refinement. That's just like, it keeps them curious and it keeps them excited and it keeps them engaged. And everybody is so passionate about how they speak because they're still excited about what it is that they're doing. Like I, I've never seen a more engaged dry fire clinic, and like dry <laughs> fire is like, like how boring is that, right? <laughs> like, well, but, that, that would but, but, I think I said that a few. I was like, yeah. all right, who's sick of this? Dude, I know, right? Yeah. Welcome but, to the nightmare. But everybody was still, still so captivated. Like you still kept the audience attention. Same thing with Mike Sherhoff. Uh, same thing with Ben. Same thing with everything we talked about, just the passion and like how everybody presented. Even when Jeff like came up and just kind of briefly talked about like, hey, this is, you know, how to use the holster, how to take the clips off properly, using the lever, you know, it's the passion in what everybody does and whatever their, their, their chosen craft and, and where they're choosing to seek mastery, it's evident, it's evident, so.